Day four, two patients done and Fern has got Isaac, our patient, one day after mitral valve repair, up and about, ready for action. Yeah, you're looking fantastic. Yeah. Day one. Day job. one, it's mad. You must be like the best patient ever. <laughs> this <is> patient. <laughs> It was great, one of the great things about coming back to Ghana six months after we were last here is to meet the guys we operated on when we were last here. So these are the first three cases we did last time. This is Bright, this is Thomas, this is Emmanuel. Uh, they all had uh, open heart surgery only six months ago and they're here just to say hello and meet the rest of the team. And it's been a real uh, pleasure to meet them again this time. Yeah. How are you doing guys? <laughs> Great, yeah. yeah. Well done. Well done, all of you. Well done. <laughs> I am sorting out space for. <laughs> yeah, he is. You're here, right? He's cleaning so the I'm cleaning. I'm, yeah. I'm going to ask David to get you a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need a team. No, I'm no. Just going, no, just let me, let, let me team. Let, let, me, let, me let, me deal, let me deal with it, and then we can get a team. Uh, maybe come in and clean. I'll help clean, but we'll just work it out. Oh, <laughs> super cleaner. <laughs> yeah, well. I've missed my uh, vocation. I shouldn't have been a nurse. I should have been a cleaner. I tell you what, yeah, a high level cleaner. Look at that. Oh, thank you. So uh, we're downstairs in the pacing lab, or what has become the pacing lab, and on the table we have Hadja, who has an unreliable heart rhythm, and on heart rhythm monitoring she has these pauses, which leave her at risk of blackout in the future. So uh, Yao here is going to implant a pacemaker, and the pacemaker is going to go up here by her right yeah. shoulder, and an incision will be made here, and we'll make a pocket for the pacemaker to sit in, and then we'll access one of the veins that goes all the way to the heart, and then using this x-ray equipment, we'll guide leads into place, which go from the pacemaker to the heart, and through these leads, the pacemaker is under constant surveillance. It's watching the heart rhythm, it's waiting to see if there are any pauses. And if there are any pauses, then the pacemaker will step in and will send an electrical impulse to the heart to remind it to beat, thereby reducing the risk of the heart stopping uh, in the future. So, we'll make a start. We're working our way through layers of fat to find the relevant vein. A lot of fat here. A lot of fat, yes. Well, we're just going to show this vein that we're aiming for. So, I don't, can you see in the bottom of the hole with the camera? You can, uh, just yeah? Higher. Okay, so that blueness here uh, is the vein, the target vein that we're trying to get this pacemaker lead into. This is the vein lifter. Mm -hmm. So you make the small incision and then just pop that yellow tip into the vein and lift it so that you can get this dilator in, okay? In a moment we will take this wire and this dilator um, out of the sheath and this sheath will become our doorway to the vein. Let's see if we can pop it into the, into the, um, into the pocket. We've we operation. Five weeks. Operation, yeah. I'm just going to help you by lifting this, okay, so that the... There we go. Just to help you. All right, so pop the lead in first. And we're going to see if we can rotate the pacemaker into place on top of the lead. All right, and it's in its new home. Excellent. We're reaching, reaching the closing stages. Uh, the pacemaker is in place. We've checked that it works and we're closing up the skin. Um, it'll take us about another 10 minutes and then hopefully we'll be done. So the operation we did today was quite a rare one. This lady is called Juliana. She's only 18 
and we performed a patent ductus arteriosus ligation. This poor young girl has a connection between her pulmonary artery and her aorta, which has made her extremely cyanotic or blue and breathless. This is something we don't normally see in the UK as these are picked up very early, but this lady's got all the way to 18 before it was picked up. So Isaac tied it off with two sutures and a clip. So once she's recovered, she can lead a normal life. The thing about this operation is they recover really quickly and here she is just four hours post-surgery with Fiona, recovering well. <laughs> An 18 year old young man who has been reckless for four years, getting worse. He currently has an exercise capacity of about 50 meters on the flat. He was started on diuretics a few months ago because of abdominal and ankle swelling. Um, so on examination, he has got CV waves in his JVP, he's got a right ventricular heave, and he's got tricuspid regurgitant murmurs and a mitral regurgitant murmur and a third heart sound and the apex beats displaced. He's got, and his liver edge is about five centimetres, um, doesn't, and it doesn't feel pulsating. And he's got no peripheral edema or um, any fluid in the lungs. Yeah, so the transfer acid that was done yesterday by my colleague appeared to show severe mitral regurgitation as well as tricuspid regurgitation. Okay, so the transesophageal echo showed a rheumatic mitral valve with severe mitral regurgitation. The pieces were over one and um, there was failure of co-optation because of a restricted posterior leaflet and the anterior leaflet not co-opting with the posterior leaflet. Left ventricular function looked normal and the right ventricle and the right atrium were severely dilated and there was severe tricuspid regurgitation as well. The estimated right ventricular systolic pressure was approximately 60 millimetres of mercury, although I haven't done the definite final measurements yet. So while Atiobika desperately needs surgery, unfortunately this poor 18 year old boy will not be able to have surgery with us as we simply don't have enough operating slots. But I hope we can raise enough money and uh, come back again so that we can in future perform surgery on people like this young lad.